Sony finally announced the new A7C2, the A7CR and the 1635 GM2. And in this video I want to share my opinion about all those new products, plus also hint about the future Sony announcement that is going to be definitely a bit more exciting than this one because we are getting something completely new. Before that, please take two seconds time to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button to not miss any of my upcoming rumors. So now it's time to talk about the A7C2, A7CR and the 1635 GM2. Disclaimer, I didn't have the chance to play with that gear because I'm the owner of a rumor site, so Sony has no interest to uh, lend me out that gear or invite me on their presentation for obvious reason, makes sense of course. So my very weak opinion about those products is based on the ton of reviews you see on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, on websites, because Sony handed over cameras and lenses to a ton of influencers and um, there is also a bit of a problem with that strategy because you know influencers are influenced by uh, the manufacturers by Sony and so there's always a question about how uh, transparent they are or how honest but um, but that's a team that's another discussion for another video uh, the important thing there are good influencers out there that good reviewers that I respect so I checked out those videos and the second disclaimer that you will not get often from uh, those influencers is that actually you don't never have to forget that the camera is more than the sum of its parts and more of the, than the specs uh, will tell you um, there is gear I do own and use that are not so exciting on paper, but when you use it, they are extraordinary. Like for example, the 40 mm 1.2 from Falklander, which is optically uh, nothing special. It doesn't have autofocus, uh, but once you use it, once I started to use it, I loved it as my main lens to go, the main lens I use and I would have never thought to use it. So that's just one example. And also the A7R5 that I'm using right now to record this video is another example of a camera that over delivers compared to the specs um, because on paper this, it uses the same A7R4 four sensor, it has nearly the same similar body, there are only minor improvements but there, some of those minor improvements made a big difference like for example the EVF, the over 9 million dot EVF is uh, just on a level where it, for the first time it does not annoy me to look into an electronic viewfinder compared to an optical viewfinder. And uh, those are those small things that you only understand when you use them. And uh, so when it comes to the A7C2, A7CR, never make a final judgment based on influences or on my videos or uh, comments that you read somewhere. Always try to get the hands on the product, test it out. Uh, you will always be surprised that it always feels different than you imagine, um, sometimes worse and sometimes better. Um, so that was an important disclaimer, something you always have to keep in mind, but now it, let's talk about the single products. Um, the A7C2, A7CR and 1635 GM2. Let's start with the A7C2. I think of the three products, it appears to be the weakest uh, one in the sense that for what you get the price is quite heavy it's $300 cheaper than the A7 IV which is okay cheaper but you lose quite a lot of features that are for me for example important like the um, EVF resolution is super low I would have loved to have a high resolution EVF on our sort of rangefinder style camera, camera that demands it to use the EVF for the style of rangefinder shooting. So that's a missed opportunity. For me, the EVF is one of the most important aspects of a camera. If the camera would have been priced at $1,899, for example, uh, it would have made much more sense to have those kind of specs. And uh, yeah, the single SD card slot, um, can be a deal breaker for some. I don't think it's that important for 95% of the people. I never had an SD card failure. I don't know people had ever had one, but of course I know it can happen one of 10,000 times that maybe there is some kind of failure. I never had it. Um, for me, it's only important when I have an important work to use a camera that has two SD slots so that I can 
have an instant backup on a second slot just to be safe. Uh, but I think in uh, the real world, one SD slot will be enough. And the A7C2 is not meant to be a professional camera, so it's okay to have one SD slot. I'm just not okay with the pricing and not okay with the uh, EVF. Um, I think Sony sh could have priced the A7C2 like the A7 IV with exactly the same specs and two SD slots. I think that would have made sense, like having just a choice between a more compact A7 IV in the form of the A7C2 with the same specs. Um, that would have been nice. Uh, or just price the A7C2 as low as it gets to um, grab some new um, potential customers that don't want, have the money to spend over $2,000. I think it would have always been nice from Sony to offer a uh, $1,500, $1, $1,700 entry-level full-frame camera. Uh, I know they're older, A7 uh, III, A7 II, A7R series. They are very affordable. You can get them for as low as $1,000. So that's probably Sony's way to um, uh, win over customers. But I think it would have been nice to have like a modern uh, 15, 16, 700 A7C2 camera that also has AI features, selfie features, whatever, just to win over some customers. That's my opinion. So I think the A7C2 of the three products is the weakest one to um, to sell. Uh, I, that's my opinion. The A7CR makes a bit more sense when you see the US pricing and the features because it's $900 less expensive than the A7R5. So that is a quite big difference in terms of pricing. And the A7CR also has that uh, cute, sexy uh, hand grip included. Uh, yeah, I know some don't like this, but at least you get that grip included, which on paper makes it look like the A7CR costs uh, more than $1,000 less if you consider the pricing of the um, hand grip. So uh, that costs above $100. So on paper, uh, you save around $1,000 compared to the A7R5. So this makes a um, bit more sense to me. Uh, it would have been nicer if it would have been still a bit lower. So that would have been super bad good um what's disappointing again is the evf uh, the single sd slot is not so problematic for me but you wonder if for three thousand dollars you still can sell cameras with one sd slot only would have been nice at least to have a hybrid sd type a card um, slot but yeah sony decided not to do that so um, uh, for the US, A7CR makes a lot of sense. In Europe, the pricing is quite high. So you get the A7CR for basically $4,000 in Europe. Um, some Europeans might consider to fly to New York, <laughs> buy the camera there, come back. Uh, it would, uh, you save $1,000 on the purchase, of the purchase of the camera and you have a nice trip in the meantime. <laughs> so, um, but of course, I understand European have Europe countries like where I live now in Italy, have a different uh, tax system. And um, that, that's now, uh, from, it's obvious here things cost more, uh, but you also have a different kind of society. Uh, you have free healthcare, whatever, and all that stuff that really also matters to me. So um, it's, that's that's the way it is. Um, then let's move on to the 1635 Gem 2. And here, long story short, this is a superb lens. It uh, barely costs more than the actual 1635 Gem. And it's uh, much more compact. Uh, you see here a size comparison made by Mobile Zero One. The lens weighs uh, more than 100 gram less and is over one centimeter shorter. The diameter is a bit um, smaller. So this is a much more manageable lens to carry with you. And it's also optically improved and it has, has all the modern features like the clicking and the controls, the aperturing. So this is a great lens. It's not a cheap affordable lens but it's for the pricing is still okay uh, if you consider the whole uh, Sony lens ecosystem and just uh, to make it clear in my opinion Sony still has the edge when it comes to lens designs compared to the competition uh, while the competition has have cameras that are uh, they're nearly as good as Sony cameras, although Sony still has some edge, for example, on autofocus and maybe sensor performance. Uh, 
when it comes to lens design, Sony really is top notch here. It, they make optically superior lenses in a smaller size. And uh, this is simply stunning what Sony is doing. Um, there are some aspects where the competition still is ahead. For example, Canon offers nice uh, 2.0 zoom, something that Sony doesn't offer. But I know that Sony patented such, uh, such uh, lens designs, so maybe Sony will also fill that gap and offer some 2.0 zooms. Maybe they're coming 2024, would be nice. And now let's move on to a last final uh, teaser. Um, I will now for the next two weeks have a uh, slowdown on rumor work. Uh, there are some announcements from third party manufacturers which I will cover, but I will take a small pause to be with my family because of course uh, in August I have busy work with uh, rumors, so I need some time for the kids. But I'm already preparing solid 100% confirmed rumors about the next Sony cameras and lenses. Of course, I leaked the 300mm GM2, so you know that uh, this lens is coming hopefully in autumn. But I got 100% confirmation the A93 is coming. The question is exactly when, uh, but I can confirm the November January timeframe, which means uh, expect an announcement of the A93 between November 2023, so in a couple of months, and January 2024. And I got trusted sources and also new sources with proof that spotted the E93. So this camera is real. This camera is going to be exciting because unlike the A7C2, A7CR, this will have a new sensor, new stack sensor. It will be the fastest camera ever made, fastest full frame camera of the world. So in terms of autofocus performance, performance uh, uh, frame rates and uh, so forth. So this will be definitely exciting. And uh, he only got small info about this camera, but at least one info has been 100% confirmed by multiple sources, something that I will share in my next videos. So please, again, you would do me a favor uh, if you would, first of all, like this video uh, to help me on the YouTube algorithm so that, uh, you know, I get promoted for my work because as you know, I'm the very first to always break rumors and news about Sony and other manufacturers and others are allegedly also copying me, but they have much more, many more uh, subscribers. So they get all the uh, buzz and all the news and, uh, and profit allegedly from my work. But I would also love if, uh, if I would get <laughs> some attention from YouTube that I do exist and I am actually the first to do uh, those kind of videos. And also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button if you don't want to miss my upcoming A93 rumor series. There will be many of them coming in the co in the in September and October. And also there will be some other exciting uh, lens rumors. Uh, so the, it's going to be a busy time from in from September, October. Uh, there will be plenty of stuff to talk about. Um, so to wrap it up, um, uh, I'm happy that most of my rumors were correct about the A7C2, A7CR um, and the 1635 GM2. I'm particularly happy about the 1635 GM2. I'm okay with the A7CR pricing in the US, a bit less in Europe. The A7C2 was the one camera I was considering to buy it. I'm probably going to skip. It's a bit too expensive and, uh, and the, probably the one deal breaker is the low resolution AVF. It's, I'm used to have that 9 million dot AVF of the E7R5. And to go back, uh, it's just a deal breaker. So I will wait it out and just see what's coming next from Sony. Um, that's it for today, folks. And I see you soon.